So in this video, we're going to talk about just how to identify the RS configuration and kind of the, the process that we go through to identify the RS uh, configuration. Okay. Now, there's some couple of steps, right? So this is the RS uh, configuration, how to identify it. And essentially, the first step you want to do is identify your Carl Center. Now your Cairo center, again, in this video, we're going to define as just any atom that has four different things bonded to it. Okay. Now, next thing you're going to do is rank your group right, by atomic number. And your group, what we mean is that the num the substituents around the, 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 the atom of interest, we're going to rank them by the atomic number. Okay. With the highest atomic number, get in. Uh, the first priority. The third thing you want to do again is keep the smallest atom or essentially the atom that weighs the smallest in terms of atomic number you want to keep them uh, to be away uh, from you. So essentially how we do that denote that in chemistry is that we give that a, uh, a dash line. Hmm? So when we say keep away, you usually should see a dash line. And the fourth thing we're going to do is just connect uh, numbers 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now let's do some examples and, and kind of solidify our knowledge. So what if you're giving this on an exam? Uh, let me, hold on. Right, so what if you're given a molecule like this on your exam? So the first thing you want to do is, okay, we want to know, do we have any RS configuration? The first thing we want to do is identify the chiral center, right? So we know that the chiral center, again, is this carbon in the middle. It has four different things bonded to it. Now let's assign our priority, right? So if I go one out, I get an oxygen. If I go one out, I get a chlorine. If I go one out, I get a hydrogen. If I go one out, I get a... CH3 or in other words a carbon now because chlorine is heavier than oxygen we know that or chlorine will actually get our number one priority oxygen is heavier than carbon so we know that oxygen or OH group will get our number two priority and number three priority is simply going to be your methyl group because by default or hydrogen which is the lowest priority group is going to get number four so let's connect the dot let's see where our arrows are going our arrows in this case are going from one to two to three to four essentially All right so in this case i'm going in a clockwise direction or an r direction but remember that we said that we have to keep our smallest uh atom it has to be away from us in other words it have it has to get a dash right in this case it's not getting a dash it's just sitting in a plane of the board and so in this case you have to flip it Right? So if you're getting R in this case, like we were getting, then the chiral center is in fact S. Now, obviously, there's another way of doing this. In fact, we could actually rearrange uh, the atoms to to put hydrogen and the, the priority away from us. But again, uh, that's just not how, how we're going to approach it. That's just time consuming. Uh, but again, uh, you're welcome to do that on your own time. What if, we're, what if we were given something like this? And we're going to start off easy uh, and just ease into uh, some more complicated examples. All right. Now, again, we're going to assign the highest priority group. So we know that bromine is actually we go one out we get a bromine we go on one out we get a fluorine we go one out we get a carbon and a hydrogen now we know hydrogen is going to get number four again it is the lowest priority group bromine is heavier than chlorine uh heavier than fluorine so we know that fluorine is going to be number two since fluorine is heavier than carbon 
Now remember, I don't want you guys to look at this as we're comparing, uh, comparing bromine or fluorine to a methyl group or a CH3 group. What we're rather doing is comparing a bromine and a fluorine to a carbon group, right? So we go one out. In other words, you could view your CH3 as CHH. -H. And so we go one out for the carbon, then we go to the hydrogen, 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 etc. So in this case, we're going from one to two to three. Uh, so we're in fact uh, we're in fact going in the S direction. And in fact, this is S. The reason why we don't need to do any flipping is because our hydrogen or or our lowest priority group is essentially already going away from us. So whatever uh, chiral center we get, that stays the same. So converse that to the first problem that we did. It's a huge difference, and. Uh, 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 really good practice. Uh, let's, go, let's look at this one. We want to identify our chiral centers and uh, identify our SRR configuration. Okay. Now, in this case, I want you to take a look at the two carbons. This is not a chiral center. Well, this carbon, right? Again, because remember, I said that a chiral center, for our definition purposes, is going to be a carbon center. That, or, or it doesn't have to be carbon, but usually an atom uh, that has four different substituents on it. In this case, we have two methyl groups, two of the same groups. Uh, so in this case, the left carbon will not be a chiral center. However, the right carbon uh, is a chiral center. As we can see that there are four different things bonded to it. We have the green circle as a whole that's bonded to it. We have a hydrogen, a methyl group, and a CH2Br group. Okay. Now, what gets number one priority? We already know that our hydrogen gets number four. Uh, well, what gets number one? Well, I want you to think of the ch 2 Br as C H H Br. And I want you to think of the CH3 as C H H H. Hmm. Now, if I go if I go one out, I get a carbon, but I also get a carbon here. Hmm. And if I go one more out, I get a hydrogen, I'm still tied. I get a hydrogen, I'm still tied right here. However, I get a bromine and a hydrogen. So we know that this is of a, a higher priority group than this. Now, what about this bulk group? Well, if I go one out, I hit a carbon. But the next one out is actually a fluorine. And the reason why we go fluorine first from the carbon is that we rank the substituents by the atomic number. So fluorine is heavier than both these carbons. right? So fluorine goes first. So when I go, so I'm distinguishing between the three atomic groups. Again, when I go one out, I, I hit carbons on all three scenarios. However, the next one out, I actually hit a fluorine. And so fluorine is heavier than carbon. And so we know that this gets the number one priority. Uh, we already spoke about these two groups. And we said that we hit a bromine instead of a hydrogen. So this is going to get number two priority. And then we know the methyl group is going to get number three. So if we connect the dots, we're going from one to two to three. And so essentially, and so essentially we're going S, right? Essentially we are going S, but remember that our hydrogen is not going away from us. Our lowest priority group in this case, which is a hydrogen, is not going away from us. And so we have to take the opposite. And so the chiral center. Uh, the configuration of this chiral center will actually be R. So look at a more complicated uh, example. What if we're given this?
Well, we have to identify the chiral centers before we can actually do anything. Right? And the first thing I like to do is kind of fill out the, the fill out the carbon structure or fill out the, the the substituents in their full entirety. So what do I mean? I see a carbon here with a bromine coming out at me. Uh, so therefore, that means that I must have a hydrogen that's going away from me. Same thing here. I see a bromine that's going away from me. That means that I must have a hydrogen that's coming out at me. So now that I have the full picture, uh, I definitely see that this is a chiral center. And I do see that this is a chiral center. Why? Because it has four different things bonded to it. Now, if I take this chiral center of interest and redraw it, because I, I just like to do it like that. I have a carbon that has a bromine coming out at me. I have a hydrogen going away from me. I do have a carbon that's bonded to a bromine and a hydrogen. And I also have a CH3 group or methyl group. Right? So this is the first carbon. Now I know we know that bromine gets number one. In this case, as bromine has the highest atomic number, uh, when we go one out here and one out here, we get a carbon, so that ties. However, on the second try, we get a bromine versus another hydrogen, so we know that this gets number two. We know that a hydrogen by default is the lowest priority group, so it's going to get number four, and we know that our methyl group is otherwise is going to get number three. So we're going one to two to three, and so essentially we're going R. And so essentially, we are going R, and that should be correct as, again, our lowest priority group, which is hydrogen, is already going away from us, so there's no need to switch. Let's look at the other carbon, carbon number three. Essentially, what I have is a carbon that has a bromine going away from it. I have a hydrogen coming out, and then I have a... Uh, a CH2, CH2, CH3 group. I also have a carbon that has a bromine and a hydrogen bond into it. Okay. Now we know that the bromine is going to get priority number one. Well, we know that hydrogen is the lowest priority group, so by default it's going to get priority number four. So the idea is so what gets number two, what gets number three? Well, essentially, if I go one out, I hit a carbon. I also hit a carbon, so I'm tied. But the second one out is actually a hydrogen, whereas the second one, one, one out here is a bromine. So we know that bromine wins out. So it's going to get priority number two. Therefore, this is three. And so essentially, we're going R in this direction, going from one to two to three. Right? However, our hydrogen, our lowest priority group, is not going away from us. Right? So it's not going away from us like we said earlier and so in this case we take the opposite right so the configuration for this crowd center is actually s and that's how we do our rs configuration ladies and gentlemen